Greenberg, the owner of Yoga Lifestyle, Baker Yoga Supply, and the maker of the Teardrop Support Cushion. Today, I'll be telling you all about basic uses of the Teardrop Support. I make the Teardrop Support, of course, but I use it too. You see, I have four herniated discs that have been bothering me since I was probably 20 years old. Um, that's part of the reason I've done yoga for all these years, to help control the pain in my legs. Um, it's usually along the perineal nerve pathway, but also I have sciatica as well. That discomfort can sometimes be unbearable. One thing I love about the way my body reacts to the teardrop support is that not only is it palliative in the moment, and what I mean by that is it feels good immediately when I get on the teardrop support, even if I'm having terrible pain down my legs. Um, but normally, the relief will last for a day or two. And that is very unusual. I've been selling other arches and uh, tractioning devices, used ones that I don't sell, and none of them have been as effective for me as the teardrop support. So people have been asking me to, to document usages of the teardrop support. And I use it uh, quite frequently. I have uh, other people who uh, have informed me as to their usages. And uh, so I, I want to make a series of videos that document all this. This is the first one, the basic uses. We're going to lie back with the tapered end into the lower back on two cushions. We're going to remove one cushion and we're going to lie back on one cushion. We're going to remove the second cushion and lie with no cushions. And then we're going to come back up, turn the teardrop around and lie back on the blunt end. So those are the uh, four basic moves to start out with on the teardrop support. So the basic use of the teardrop support is to lie on it and let it work its magic. What you do is you sit in front of the teardrop, you snug the tapered ends, into the area behind your tailbone. And once it's snugly in place, you can bring your hands behind you to support your body going very, very slowly back on the teardrop. Okay? I can't emphasize that enough. Lying back on the teardrop so that you feel each vertebrae sinking into the buckwheat is what you want. Once you're lying back on the teardrop, you'll feel compressive force into your middle back. You'll feel a tractioning of the lumbar spine and also the cervical spine. So they drop off the top and the bottom and you're supported in the middle of the back. Um, this combination is a winning combination. What it allows is the parasympathetic nervous system is triggered by that firm support. And as the muscles begin to relax and lengthen, the spine will be allowed to relax and lengthen. Notice how your back feels against the cushion in all the different places where it's touching, where it's barely touching, where it's not touching at all. You'll feel the compressive force into the mid back. You'll feel the tractioning of the lower and the upper back. Um, you'll feel the expansion in the chest, the ribs, the lungs, um, and just witness all that for a few breaths, right? Once you've done that, you may want to deepen the experience by inhaling into the stomach and letting the stomach puff out real big. As it puffs out, it will also expand into the back so that you're opening up all your whole lower area there in the lumbar region 
And as you exhale, again, very slowly, you'll feel deep relaxation coming into that area. And it's very nice to do, do that about three times, and that'll help also to bring your focus onto the sensation of the lower back. Okay. Uh, if you feel called to, um, after a few more relaxed breaths where you're just lying there, you may do complete breath, which is breathing into the belly, then the chest, and then the top third of the lungs. You'll notice each time you do one of these different breaths, the sensation of the back against the cushion shifts, and once you're done doing the exertion of the breathing, deeper relaxation occurs. People ask me, how long should I be on the teardrop? Um, it's completely up to you, of course. Uh, I have found that five minutes is, well, I shouldn't say minimum, because I have seen people get a terrific response in just two or three minutes. And again, like I said, I've been taking this to uh, conferences and uh, different places where people are in a hurry. They try it for a few minutes, they love it, and they end up buying it. So I know that they're impressed by how it makes them feel in just a few minutes. However, I suggest that you spend at least five minutes on the teardrop. That's enough time to deep, deeply relax into it and begin to get maximum benefit. Now, if you can spend 10 or 15 minutes, it's amazing. Um, you'll be on there for nine minutes, 10 minutes, and this delicious shift will happen where you'll feel your muscles releasing, you'll feel your spine opening up. And, you know, if you don't spend the time, these things don't occur. For those who are more flexible, you may uh, at some point not want to have your head propped up. You may feel invited to remove one or both of the cushions after you've spent some time uh, lying there. And I encourage you to do that if it feels good to you. You don't want to go anywhere that's painful or uncomfortable. And the greater opening and the uh, greater pressure into the mid-back that comes when you do uh, move the head cushions away can support your back health and greater opening in the chest and lungs. So it's, uh, it, it's, it's a nice practice to do if it feels right to you. And if that's uh, comfortable for you, I encourage you to do it. One of the uh, simple things that you can do to deepen your practice on the teardrop, if, especially for people who have uh, lower back issues, um, is to turn the teardrop so that the blunt end is into the lower back. Okay? So doing that is going to uh, put more compressive force into the lower back directly. And that can really work out a lot of kinks. Um, and it can be too intense if your back's very sore, or it can be just right. So you have to feel your way with it. Another thing that you can do is if it feels too intense, you can back off some of the buckwheat. So then it's not quite as fully compressive, right? Or if you're looking for more compression, you can build up the buckwheat. So that's one of the great things about the teardrop and the design uh, and the materials is that it can be modified for your specific sense of how you're feeling on any specific day. Now getting off the teardrop, um, sometimes it can be a daunting uh, thing. You'll be so relaxed you can't even imagine ever getting up, first of all. But, um, but you do have to eventually rejoin the world. And when that happens, when you need to get up off the teardrop, you bend your knees, let them drop off to one side, and let your torso turn in that direction. And you'll just 
basically slide off the teardrop into a fetal position. Um, take a few breaths, just relaxing right there. Coming off the teardrop, you're going to notice a lot of changes right away. And then sit up and eventually stand up. And I like to take a walk around and see the effect um, on my back and my hips and my shoulder girdle. Um, I'm, well, I'm always amazed at uh, how fantastic I feel after I come off the teardrop. Um, just feel so much looser, freer, um, juicy, ready to face the day, you know or the evening, as it may be.